Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, another episode of Meatloaf here, putting it together. Um, this weekend was kind of interesting. Um, I got an email from a viewer, actually, a local viewer, uh, that I've been trying to uh, meet up with at some point, and uh, we've kind of <laughs> tromped over the same ground once in a while and uh, crossed paths. Anyway, uh, Larry Bastian uh, sent me a email. Um, Friday night or Saturday morning, something like that. Um, there was an estate sale up near Santa Rosa that he thought I should take a look at. Um, anyway, uh, I wasn't really planning on going up there. It's you know, it's an hour drive from here, and uh, uh, but something else kind of happened uh, that was up that way, and uh, we have a good uh, lunch spot that my wife and I like to go to. So we decided to go ahead and go. Uh, well, it turned out that it was a um, a pretty good little estate sale and I got a few things that we're going to look at here and Larry thanks a lot for uh, turning me and hooking me up with that uh, that was a nice one um, sadly it's a uh, it's another case of uh, you know one of our uh, our old guys um, uh, passing on and uh, leaving his uh, um, his stuff to be uh, uh, distributed to uh, the folks that are coming in behind him so um, um, anyway, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit when we get a little farther. Um, got a uh, big view uh, viewer appreciation box in, and uh, we'll uh, uh, open that up. And it's uh, all the pieces are individually wrapped in there, so I kind of decided to open them up on camera because I thought that would be fun uh, as well. And uh, so it'll be a surprise for me too. I don't know what's in there. Um, and then uh, we reveal the mystery tool. Um, of last week, those little uh, uh, screwdriver-y looking things. So we're going to take a look at those and uh, we're going to introduce a new mystery tool. So, I don't know. If that's not enough for you, go watch an older video. <laughs> There's plenty of stuff back there. So, uh, let's uh, pop over to the table, let's drag some stuff out and uh, let's get a look at some of these things. Okay, so we've got these uh, mystery tools here that we were talking about last week. And, um, you know, I apologize for the, uh, the overexposed <clears throat> image, but it just happened to be, that's uh, Mr. Adam Booth pinging me there. <laughs> um, the afternoon sun was coming through the window and I needed to film, so uh, it was kind of a, uh, not a cool time to be filming. Anyway, uh, this is in the morning, the sun's not coming in the windows, so it's a little bit better. And you can see the, the tips of these a little bit better as well. Now what these are, or these are um, um, a couple of guys guessed what they were. One guy uh, uh, emailed me privately and a, another guy nailed it uh, online and that was Chris W. Um, Chris W. He pegged these. These are Sony or uh, alignment tools and what they do is they align the um, uh, the reed heads for uh, reel to reel uh, video and audio tape stuff. So uh, I'm going to cut away to a, uh, uh, some images that Walter Sapizi sent me uh, of where these tools actually fit in and how they, how they use. So let's go to that. Okay, so now we're back, so you kind of see how those fit in there. But these are used um, for different styles of decks uh, to make these very, very, very small precision adjustments. And um, anyway, Chris, uh, good job on, uh, on the guest there. And, um, and Walter, thank you very much for sending the mystery tools in. This was a pretty good one. Uh, I appreciate it. And um, Chris, if uh, if you're interested in one of those uh, one of those heads, uh, Walter uh, has one that uh, he's willing to give up. So shoot me an email if you're uh, if you're interested in that. Anyway, thanks for thanks for playing along. Okay, so um, let's let's take a look at this little uh, this little lot of stuff that uh, that we got at the estate sale, um, and this is the one that uh, Larry Bastian and um, Bastian and. Uh, sent me a little Craigslist alert uh, via email. So let's just go through some of this stuff real quick. And uh, you, can look at, uh, uh, you can look at the stuff. So let's do the easy stuff first. This is uh, 
this is my favorite type of rawhide hammer. Um, this is a Chicago uh, uh, split head rawhide hammer. So you loosen this screw here. Oh, it's actually kind of loose. Oh, not. And the head opens up and you can remove the faces. Now, it was marked $10, but I'll, I'll tell you the whole story here. Um, it's got the original handle on it, which you can see here. It says number two on it too. I'll clean the handle up and stuff. Anyway, uh, even at ten bucks, this is a this is a great deal. These are something like thirty five dollars for the hammer, and then uh, ten or fifteen bucks a pop for the uh, for the faces, which doesn't make any sense since we eat so many hamburgers. These ought to be almost free, right? <laughs> anyway, so that's the excuse me one of the items, and um, set that aside. There's Mr. Adam Booth again. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I got a couple of books. Uh, this is the first one here, uh, SI Metric Handbook. I, I kind of flipped through it and I just thought it was interesting. Um, it's just got some comparisons and uh, things like that uh, between inch and metric, um, how the meters define, you know, stuff like that. Um, it was there, I just kind of threw it. Oh, there's a little drill gauge uh, project there, that's kind of cool. Um, and, um, oh, well, you know, I need to look through this. Apparently it's got some uh, some other stuff in it. Anyway, uh, like I said, this caught my attention. I don't have this book, um, and uh, so I figured it was worth uh, grabbing and, uh, and going through. Anyway, let's look at that again. Um, and uh, this is the guy here, um, NC Manager, Max Machinery. So we'll, we'll talk about him in just a second. Um, all right, so that's the first book. Quite have enough room. I got something on the table here. So it's another one. Uh, it's just a Torrington catalog. Um, but, you know, this is when they used to give out catalogs. Now you, you try to look this crap up online and it's a damn nightmare, right? So books are still good um, you have to weed through uh, piles and piles of uh, dead-end uh, links on the on the web to find this information they used to just hand it out in book form so it shows about different kinds of bearings um, different mounting arrangements which a lot of guys are real curious about when they're designing um, uh, their own equipment um, how to install them how to check them how to clean them you know all this great stuff, right? They used to hand this stuff out. Now it's pretty hard to hard to come by. And then there was a second one of those too. Um, I didn't compare these to see if they're the same, but uh, this is great because it shows. Hey, here's how you use our bearings, right? Um, um, the different styles and whatnot. So um, always uh, always kind of a neat thing. So that's a good deal. Okay, so the next, uh, I'm just trying to clear the decks here. The next part of this lot was, so this is uh, some plastic here. Uh, actually, it's Delrin uh, acetyl. And these are, I don't know, these are three feet long. They're about a meter long and one inch diameter. Uh, this stuff goes for, oh, I don't know, four to five dollars a foot, something like that, depending on where you buy it from. So, um, and some other material I got was some kind of heavy wall, Looks like about a half inch wall aluminum tubing. So, you know, that's probably worth uh, 40 or 50 bucks, something like that, if you have to if you have to buy it cold, all right? So the reason I'm telling you the prices is I'm gonna tell you what I paid for this whole lot when we get to the end. Okay, <clears throat> all right. So the next one, um, there was a, a drill set, I picked it up. It's uh, screw machine length, uh, wire sizes. Okay, so they're the little stubbies. Um, there's a few. There's a few missing. Not too bad. Oh, look at that. There's. I didn't notice that before. There's some uh, some uh, bonus uh, center drills in there. So there's a tiny one. Now there's a uh, there's a break easy size right there. That'll uh, that'll snap off just looking at it harshly. So. <laughs> And look, guess what? Other people do it too, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that was part of the lot. Now, if you bought this set uh, from McMaster Car, uh, this is 100 bucks probably, something like that. So these are split point black oxide, uh, wire sizes, stub length. 
uh, in a Hewitt box. So, you know, that's over a hundred bucks probably, okay? And then um, we've got, let's do this one next. We got a bunch of tool bit blanks, uh, three quarter. Those are, uh, they don't give those away. And then a few half inchers. And then uh, some other ones. Let's pull these out real quick. Um, let's talk about those last. Three eighths. So, you know, you can always use these, right? I mean, uh, whenever you see ones that aren't ground up or whatever, and you can get them for a reasonable price, uh, it's, it's a good idea. So, put those away. Now these, these are more expensive uh, when you go to buy them. And these are rectangular cross-section, quarter by half. And um, somebody's already spent some time grinding a, a fairly nice uh, uh, grooving tool there. And there's another one. And it's dirty, but uh, it's a very nice grind on the end here. In fact, if I had to guess, I'd say uh, it almost, nah, it's hand ground, okay. But it's got a slight angle to it so that you can sidle up alongside something like that. And, uh, and do a groove along a, a shaft or, um, you know, like a face groove or something like that. So um, that's kind of a nice thing. And this is also that rect So rectangular ones are nice because, you know, a lot of times it's already thinned down for you, but you don't lose any height that gives it the strength. So uh, that's why rectangular ones are nice to have. All right. Oh, so that's probably... I mean, just to throw a number at it, you know, if you bought these brand new, this is probably, I don't know, at least 50 bucks, maybe $100 worth of uh, high-speed steel there. Okay, the well, next one is this little guy here. I found this uh, guy hiding uh, in a little tool rack uh, um, there. I, I cleaned it up a little bit. It was kind of dusty, and uh, I wanted to see what the, uh, the mounting taper was. And uh, so this is an Albrecht, name brand. It's got a crappy shank on it. And uh, so this is something that uh, CNC guys do when, when, they, when they use these in, uh, in tool holders so they don't slide out. They grind a little flat on there for the set screw to bear on. I'll probably replace that shank um, and uh, you know put a fresh one on there and, uh, and get it nice. Came with a little welding countersink, a little 90 degree countersink. Things in great shape. Uh, and it works fine. I squirted a little M1 in there and just kind of uh, cleaned it up a little bit. Um, this discoloration here is from, from whatever kind of coolant they were using and it dried on there and stained it a little bit. Um, now this is a zero to quarter inch or you know about six millimeter, 6.4, 6.5 millimeter max. I don't have one this size actually, so this is kind of a, uh, a, a cool addition to my uh, Albrecht Chuck collection. So now, price. You go to buy one of these new, and these are pushing $300 uh, new, and that would be without a, uh, a taper on it. Um, you know, you can catch them on sale, I think a little cheaper than that maybe, but uh, so, you know, we'll say 250 to $300 for, for that Chuck. So, nice Chuck. Now in that same that same pile, I found this guy here, okay, and this is a uh, geometric die head, okay. Now this is kind of a a, a little bit of a strange one because this is for a uh, this goes on like a screw machine or a Davenport or Brown and Sharp screw machine um, that has a uh, uh, there's a release mechanism, so it doesn't have a, a lever release mechanism. So to release this one, let's see, is it? Okay, it's cocked right now, so when you pull this ring back, boop, it releases. And um, so then you cock it, I'm trying to hold it with the camera so you can see it there. And then um, you run this onto your rod, and it's got uh, 1024 uh, chasers in it right now. You run it on your rod, and then it hits a little stop, bink, and it opens up and then retracts. Um, so, I don't know, you could argue what these are, what these are worth, okay, but yeah, you, know, you look around on eBay and depending on condition and stuff, you know, 80 to $300, okay? So uh, now to change the chasers, it's got a little lever back here that you can pull that back and then you can, you can get the chasers out. And these chasers are available. These are the peg type ones here 
with the extended uh, extended top. So this one will go up to uh, nine sixteenths. Okay, so about thirteen millimeters, um, and uh, which is a kind of a handy size. I'll probably get some more chasers for this. Um, that way, I can use this in the lathe if I have some a bunch of rods to thread or things to thread. Uh, that I want to uh, do real quickly and not have to single point them all. So anyway, uh, that's uh, uh, a geometric die head. And uh, um, so for that whole lot of stuff that I just showed you from that estate sale, that was 80 bucks, okay? So maybe what I'll do is I'll group it all together and you guys can see it as a, uh, as a lot and then we'll, we'll talk just a little bit more. Okay, so here's the, the whole thing all together that I just showed you. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, to say a, a couple words about the, uh, the guy that uh, this stuff came from. Um, his name was uh, Edward Broku, and uh, he had his own shop up uh, uh, near Santa Rosa in California here. And it was called uh, Edco Machine and Tool. And uh, we'll put a little thing there. Um, so I believe Ed passed away uh, a while back, and um, his, uh, uh, his wife, his widow, uh, was you know wanted to sell the house and they're clearing out a bunch of equipment and uh, and tooling and whatnot. So uh, Larry turned me on to the estate sale and I went up there and uh, helped them out uh, and bought some stuff. Um, Ed used to work for a company called uh, Max Machinery in Healdsburg and uh, I guess he was the uh, NC manager. So uh, anyway, just a moment of silence for Ed. One of our uh, one of our own has passed on and. Uh, Gone to the big tool room uh, in the sky there, and um, so I just wanted to do, uh, to thank Ed for uh, collecting all this stuff, and then it ends up uh, uh, with somebody else that uh, that will put it to good use. So uh, I think that's the the best that we can ask for if uh, um, you know once we head to the big tool room. Anyway, Ed, thank you very much, and um, and Larry, thank you too for uh, for uh, making it possible. Okay, thanks, guys. Okay, so this next one comes to us from uh, Fred Zimmerman, and um, um, he uh, he sent me a, a cool little uh, uh, care package. And now I haven't opened anything because he he, he gift wrapped these uh, so nicely. So I figured I'd open them on camera and have it be kind of a surprise for everybody. Um, so. His grandfather and father were machinists and engineers at Chrysler in the good old days when computers weren't available. Um, he's a woodworker and uh, he likes surfing YouTube and he likes all the guys and, uh, and uh, better than TV because there's no commercials. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, the, uh, we're going to open some of this stuff up and we're going to have a look at it and, uh, and, and see what Fred sent us here. All right, so and each one's got little messages on it, which I thought was kind of cool here. And this one says, uh, uh, you can break some taps with this dude. And I'm feeling it here, so I, I'm getting a sense of what it might be. And uh, let's pop it open and see what we got. <laughs> kind of like, uh, kind of like Christmas, right? Kind of cool. Let's see what we got. Oh boy, look at that. <laughs> yep. I would say that uh, you could bust some taps with that dude. <laughs> now that's kind of an interesting rig there. Um, yeah, this is a Greenfield tap and die. Yeah, that's a pretty good size one there. Look at that. It's got some big handles on it. So uh, um, that's a mighty that's a mighty uh, <laughs> that's a mighty tap wrench here. And it's got some uh, eccentricities there. I would say. Anyway, Fred, thank you very much for that. Let's uh, let's keep going here. Let's see what else we got because there's a bunch of stuff in here. Now this one this one's got my curiosity going here. So this is kind of this week's mystery tool, and um, we'll see if uh, we can figure out what this is. Um, Fred doesn't know Fred doesn't know what it is, and uh, and I haven't opened it yet, so I haven't had an opportunity to. Uh, to uh, try to figure out what it is, so. It's uh, well packed. All right. Let's just do this. Oh boy. What 
the heck is it? <laughs> oh, this is a uh, hmm. nail point. So this this looks like it has something to do with mat cutting or frame cutting. So it says uh, caution blade opening. Uh, so uh, you probably don't want to. Uh, and then this says. Uh, well, turn it around so you guys can read it here. So blade opening and nail point. So dare I. I don't want this thing to shoot off at me here. Let's see here. Oh yeah, look at that. Ha, <laughs> that's pretty frightening. Look at it. So let's see if you can see that. See that? A sharp blade comes out. Um, wow. And a nail. So what, what the heck's going on with this thing here? God, this thing's, this is crazy. I gotta believe it's some kind of framing tool or something like that, and um, um, you know, for like framing pictures or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, if you guys know what that is, that's uh, we're gonna make this this week's mystery tool, um, and uh, you guys can try to figure out what uh, what that is. <laughs> it says made in China, and I think there's no other patent pending. No other clues on there uh, what this thing might be. So, but it's got two blades and a deadly point on it. Anyway, there it is, mystery tool. Okay, so we can keep going here with uh, with uh, Fred's uh, Christmas box here. <laughs> so this this packing tape. Send you to tears sometimes. See the the tape sticks to the blade and then uh, folds over it, and then your knife doesn't work. Oh, okay. Look, some tool bits here. Oh, yeah. Okay, some caps. And oh, wow. Look at that. Okay, now there's that's kind of interesting. Let's take a look. So there's, there's something you don't see all the time. So that's a stellite tool bit. Um, and this is a, a very old cast alloy. Um, and this stuff is harder than a monkey's uncle to grind. Uh, it takes you a while to grind this. But uh, um, this stuff, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. You can be turning with this and you can see that the tool is red hot, but it's still... Uh, um, it's still peeling metal off of there. So that's kind of cool. I, I have a couple little pieces of stellite floating around, but I don't have a, I don't think I have a big one like that. This stuff is incredibly tough and works really well. So let's see if, what do we got here? Um, um, M20. So I, I don't, I don't think that's stellite, something else. These are, that's a little quarter inch. Now that's an odd one. That's a rectangular one. Um, um, Gorham, yeah, it's, I don't have a little rectangular one like that, that's kind of cool. Another quarter inch, ground for something. Okay, uh, that looks like a piece of key stock to me, uh, just plain, plain steel. And then another slightly rectangular one, but uh, this is ground for a threader here. Okay, kind of cool. Well, that's uh, that's kind of spectacular. I like that. Um, and then we got some taps. Okay, so hand taps by sixteenths. That's an old one. Greenfield half twenty feels pretty good. A little dinky reamer. All right, very good. And a good little tool uh, tooling package there. Thank you very much, Fred. Let's uh, let's keep going here. I got the camera rolling. Well, I got the camera rolling. I should just bring a razor blade out here. Oh, no, no message on those two. Oh, what do we got here? Okay. All right, so square wrench, Matheson. So this Matheson is, uh, so this is probably an acetylene bottle wrench here, 
or a gas bottle wrench here. Matheson is an old uh, uh, gas supplying company, uh, and that's a kind of a cool, uh, cool wrench. And uh, what do we got here? No. Nork. Looks like a scriber. Oh yeah. So it doesn't look like carbide, but it's got a hardened tip in there, which is kind of nice. It's it's a nice shaped scriber, I'd have to say. I like the I like the look of that. Let's see what's on this end here. Hmm. That's got a little rotating. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. So there's extra extra tippies in there. So uh, it looks like you can swap those out. I kind of I, I have to say that I do like the uh, the shape of this and the um, um, the lines. Right? It's got this nice taper here, and uh, and then the hex here. It's a good length. Scriber, and it looks like these tips are probably removable. I'm not going to pull that off right now. All right, very good, cool. Thanks, Fred. And then what do we got here? Oh, okay, so it's just a uh, it's a screw gauge, and I guess you can uh, you can measure uh, screws here, and that seems about right, about a quarter inch there. Yeah, that's a quarter twenty tap. So you can check screw sizes here, and um, what is that scale? So what is the numbered scale on the side there? 15, it's not millimeters. Um, number screws? Oh yeah, okay, so, the, uh, so these are uh, machine screw sizes here on the side. Uh, so 10 and 3 16 so they actually had, uh, um, you know, larger than uh, than 12 uh, in the past, and um, but these are kind of uh, gone with the wind. So this is pretty old then, probably, huh? Yeah. Anyway, cool a little uh, little uh, hole gauge there. All right, thank you very much, Fred. That's a cool little package too. Okay, so I think the last one. Um, a gift should be wrapped like a gift, and uh, these are cool. All right, so I can hardly wait here. <laughs> see what uh, see what we got in here. Ooh, nice box. Whatever's in there. Uh oh. Ooh. So right out of the gate, I see something that, uh, that makes me uh, get a little bit excited. So, so you know you're a machinery head when this is the kind of stuff that gets you excited, right? So uh, anyway, I guess it takes a lot to get me excited now. So this is calib calibration traceable to the National Bureau of Standards. Okay, so that's usually a, kind of a neat thing. Pop this open here. Oh, look at that. Wow. Oh, wow, these are made by Challenge. Holy shit. Inch. Okay, so these are production grade, inch size, uh, 60 millionths accuracy. Oh, they're 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 small granite parallels. Wow, that is pretty cool. I don't have any granite parallels. These are very nice. Uh, Challenge uh, is kind of an interesting. Oops. Is kind of an interesting company. They make surface plates uh, and uh, paper punching uh, machinery and quite a few other things. So um, um, I'm familiar with them as they they make some really nice um, uh, surface plates and lapping plates and things like that. So um, you can go check out their website here. Uh, I'll put a link here for you guys. But uh, they make some really neat stuff. Uh, and apparently, at some point, they made granite uh, granite parallels. Wow! So those are uh, those are pretty cool, man. Fred, this is really nice. Uh, this is a really nice gift. Um, as I don't have any, 
and uh, I'm certain that I can make use of these. So they're one inch, one by six. Uh, it's too bad that that's kind of losing its thing. And uh, about a half inch thick there, so, so 25 millimeters by 150 millimeters. Uh, by 13 millimeters or 12.7 for us uh, decimal hunters out there. Um, black granite parallels in a sweet box. Fred, that's a really nice gift. Thank you very much. I will put that to, to good use. Thank you, my friend. That's, uh, that's wonderful. So one last thing uh, I thought was kind of funny is the, uh, the box that uh, Fred sent all that stuff in. So, uh, I don't know if he's trying to tell me something here. This is the six week body makeover. Um, <laughs> and uh, accelerated body sculpting program. Fred, are you trying to, are you trying to tell me something here, buddy? <laughs> anyway, Fred, uh, it's all, uh, I'm just joking. And uh, thank you very much for the, uh, the nice uh, box of uh, exercise equipment. Oh, look at that. So, it's uh, made in China, no less. Anyway, thank you very much, Fred. Okay, so I thought what we would do is uh, is clean the handle uh, uh, of this thing here. It's kind of saturated with oil a little bit, and we'll clean some of that crud off of there. Um, I got some, uh, this is this Zep uh, floor stripper here, and we're just gonna, we're gonna put some on there and let it sit for a sec while I uh, yap. Um, and for those guys that uh, you know can't look stuff up, this is these heavy-duty uh, floor stripper. So uh, this will save me about 35 comments uh, right there. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, and a friend of mine, uh, Mark Bailey, uh, he works. Well, he sent me these uh, these surgical sponges here. Uh, but they have this kind of open weave and they actually have a little bit of scrubbing action which is really nice for cleaning stuff. Uh, they work good on glass and uh, all kinds of things and uh, I'm finding lots of uses for them. So uh, we're gonna um, we're gonna use this to uh, clean this hammer handle here so I'm gonna get a little on there too. You know and I was using this for something else. They last quite a while. talking. Now that's a nice patina now so you can see the crud that came off of that but that wood grains come out now and you can see the uh, you can see the the marking there. And that's probably all I'll do on that. Some red paint on there. Uh, I guess uh, the head was painted red at one point. Anyway, well, let me, uh, I'm going to get something to kind of dry this. It's kind of a cruddy rag. <laughs> so this is, these are these other rags that Mark sends me for use in the shop. And these are, uh, these are part of these surgical kits that uh, once they open them and they're not sterile anymore, they got to get rid of them legally. So, uh, Okay. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's a that's a nice handle actually. All right. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna do up here. I don't think I'm gonna do much up here. Just kind of. You know, I like a, I like a tool to show its age and its uh, and its usage, right? You know, every little, you know, there's a story right there somewhere, right? I don't know what the story is on this particular one, but, uh, you know, I know on some of my stuff that uh, when I look at it and I see a crack or a, a little gouge like that, I go, oh, yeah, I remember that, you know. <laughs> but uh, I like tools to not be afraid to show their age and, uh, and, and their usage, you know. Yeah, sure, it's nice to have a pristine tool, you know, it depends what it is. But, uh, I mean, they're really meant to be used, in my mind, not to sit on the shelf, so. Okay, anyway, that's a, 
a, a way you can clean a, uh, a really greasy hammer handle. You see these uh, rolling around in mechanics toolboxes, uh, people that work on, on machines that have a lot of uh, oil or lubricants, the handles are black, but you can, uh, you can bring them back pretty easily. So anyway, there's that.